If you clicked on this video, there's a good chance you carry a drop wallet and maybe a flat pack tourniquet. Or you're just curious at understanding the difference between three very expensive guns. The Staccato C2, the Beretta 92G Elite LTT RDO, and the Walter Q4SF. I took all three guns to the range recently to understand what's what between them. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and today we're talking about three amazing guns that you see pop up all the time in discussions amongst serious defensive minded people. These are super premium guns and when I share my opinions with you, please remember that these are only my opinions and don't get all upset and go on crusades in the comments. Although if you want to, it helps boost my content as far as the algorithm's concerned, so maybe do do that. But these guns are super expensive with the least expensive of the trio starting out at $1,300 is the Walter Q. Q4SF. Going up from there at just over $1,500 in the fourth quarter of 2021 is the Beretta 92 Elite LTT, the Langdon Tactical model of the Beretta. And capping off the trio is going to be the Staccato C2 Optics Ready. This is the most expensive pistol, tipping the scales in the fourth quarter of 2021 at about $2,300. We're gonna try, but I'm pretty sure this, there's no way this video is gonna stay monetized. So today's video sponsor is going to be all of my lovely patrons over at patreon.com. There's a link in the description if you want to sign up over there and help support the work that I do here on this channel. But if that's just a a little too rich for your blood just for liking and subscribing to the video I'm going to throw in a plot twist right at the end of the video in true youtuber fashion so be sure to stick around for that so the premise of the video is simple I took the guns to the range and I ran them through a series of tests that would kind of test them in their capabilities as defensive use pistols first things first I put them on the chronograph to see if there was going to be any difference between the two different hollow points that I had with me I then had a from the holster draw to a plate rack at 25 yards for a single shot accuracy. I then had a slow fire 25 yard B8 target and then I finished on a 15 yard C zone steel in rapid fire testing both a light recoiling target load and a heavier recoiling NATO load. So I'll walk you through all the data I was able to collect and then I'll completely disregard it in crowning a winner at the end of the video after the plot twist. But before we get going to the range let's take a look at the pistols. So this is the Beretta 92G Elite LTT RDO meaning it is cut straight from the factory for a red dot. It is a double action, single action gun. The double action pull is just under seven pounds and the single action pull is right at three and a half pounds. Since this bears Ernest Langdon's name, it was actually breathed on by his gunsmiths in his shop and the trigger job is enhanced and is everything it can be for a Beretta pistol. The double action is silky smooth and the single action is super short, very crisp and has an exceptionally short reset. The Beretta is the middle weight of the pistols we're gonna look at, tipping the scales at right around 30 four ounces so it's heavy enough to shoot well but it's light enough where you could still carry it if you wanted to. Next made right here in Texas is the Staccato C2. The C2 is a wide body 1911 or colloquially known as a 2011. It is a single action only pistol meaning you will have to operate a manual safety. The way the gun is designed is actually the frame is the piece just underneath the slide which the plastic grip bolts onto and the gun features a large bull barrel which keeps the reciprocating mass down on the gun, but this is actually the lightest gun of the trio, tipping the scales at about 27 ounces. Trigger pull weight is weighted at about four and a half pounds right now, and the, the trigger is not as clean as the other two guns. There is a little bit of creep before the hammer will fall. As this is a borrowed gun, the owner is kind of eccentric and knocked the sights off, as I'm sure you've noticed, but it has a superior sighting system in the SRO anyway. And rounding out the trio is the German. It is the wall Walter Q4SF, SF being steel frame. It is the heaviest gun in the trio, tipping the scales at about 37 ounces. It has a striker fired action with the optional Walter Dynamic Performance Trigger Kit. The trigger breaks at just about five pounds, although if you handled it, you wouldn't believe me when I told you it was five pounds. The barrel is a conventional barrel and it is only about four inches long. So first thing I did at the range was put the guns on the chrono. I had two types of hollow points available to me. It was the Hornady American Gunner and a a 
six hour V Crown 147 grain ammunition. Now the intent picking those two different hollow points is that the 115 potentially is gonna see the biggest velocity increase on longer barrels. It's gonna see more of a performance decrease on shorter barrels. Conversely, the 147 grain should have a tighter performance band across all of the barrel lengths. And what I found was pretty much what you'd expect. The Beretta generally had the highest numbers and the four inch guns all had lower numbers. Now, one thing that is interesting is despite the ammo all being basically the same, the Walter had the most consistent reading. Now that could be because the five cartridges that I picked up happened to all be closer together or the barrel on the Walter pistol is cut in such a way that it gets more consistent results with the projectiles. Can't really tell based on the sample size that we have, but I was interested to find out that the Walter had the most consistent uh, velocities of any of the guns we tried. Now we're getting into the performance thing and I want to be very clear with you that while I am a YouTuber and have an Instagram account, I did not just show my like perfect runs. In fact, this data is worthless. If all I did was show you how good I am when I'm warmed up as a shooter. The only shooting that I did with the guns prior to getting on film with you is validating zero with the ammunition that I shot. And the target loads that I shot for the rest of the video are the Winchester white box for the 115 target loads and the Winchester Valor 124 grain NATO loads. So each gun got between five and 10 rounds depending on how bad the zero was when I started. Now you'll notice I'm not actually clearing the garment when I present the gun to the target and that's because it was a flashlight holster I was carrying that day and I didn't want to move the flashlight from gun to gun to gun. Sorry, sometimes I'm a lazy YouTuber. Starting with the Beretta, I would expect my draw times to be a little bit slower and potentially have more misses, but I was able to go four for six, which was pretty good. Both of the shots that I shanked with the Beretta were not due to my trigger press, they were due to my sight picture. The dot wasn't quite on the plate when I broke the shot, and as a result, I didn't hit the plate. It's worth noting that I used to compete with the Beretta last year. I shot Carry Optics and USPSA on the Beretta platform, so while I'm a little bit out of practice with the Beretta, I did have a pretty good level of proficiency with it. My draw time averaged between about a 145 to a 155 time with the Beretta, just pausing on the double action shot to get a sight picture and clean it up before sending it. Next up is the Staccato. This year I have been competing with an open gun, a Bull Armory Ultimate Racer. So the Staccato replicates that sight picture and index better than any of the other guns. The grip is very similar to my competition gun and as a result my draw was faster because the dot was exactly where I was looking when it came out of the holster. But for the same reason with the Beretta I ended up biting on a couple dodgy sight pictures and I ended up going four for six. And finishing off with the Walter, the heavier frame probably did slow me down a little bit going from a 27 ounce gun to a 37 ounce gun. So my draw time wasn't quite as fast on the Walter. However, it was still a little bit quicker than the Beretta. My draws hovered at about 1.4 seconds. Similar to the other two guns, I duffed two shots because I had a dodgy sight picture. One was because the sight was just barely off the plate and the other one was I had a trigger prep fail. Uh, while prepping the trigger on the presentation, I ended up breaking the shot a little bit too early and sending it low just underneath the plate. So, so on the Walter, the trigger take up is like outrageously short. It's shorter than both of the other hammer fired guns. Like it's right there on the wall. Like that's all the take up you get. If you move the trigger any more than that, it's going. So trigger is exceptionally tuned up with this dynamic performance trigger. And I just put the kit in a week or so ago. I haven't shot it much with the kit in, but, uh, it's a legit trigger. Next up was shooting the 25 yard B8. Each target was shot 10 times, taking an aggregate score and an X count. Now I warn you guys, I am not the best B8 shooter. I don't have the patience to line up the perfect sight picture and send it. I compete in USPSA. So really I'm just trying to keep them all in the black and if I accomplish that, I'm reasonably happy. So I started with the Beretta 92 and I can say that I'm not the biggest fan now that I'm used to competing with double actions with kind of the hump at the bottom of the Beretta grip. Uh, it led to me shanking three shots low on it, but generally speaking, the grouping was pretty good when I could do my part. So the Beretta was able to finish with a semi-okay 91 with two Xs. Next up, because Alphabet is the C2, the C2 I felt much better about shooting. I felt like immediately the group was significantly better than the Beretta. But when I went down range, while it was better, it certainly was more consistent. The flyers were closer to the point of aim. I was only able to shoot a 93 with a 1X. So a better score, but not a lot better. 
And finishing things up with the Walter Q4, I did not feel as confident with it as I did the C2. However, as I kept shooting, I kept noticing the dot wasn't moving as I was pulling the trigger. When I went down range to look at the target, I was surprised how much better I did shoot the Walter than the C2. I think that the Walter, because it is the heaviest frame we had going, it was the easiest to hold steady. And so with the Walter, I was able to shoot a 95 with two X's. So the Walter did very, very well. The next drill was a recoil management test. And I tested tested two loads, I shot the light load first and then the heavy load with the NATO loading. Some sh guns will shoot light loads brilliantly but you load them up with duty ammunition and they're not very pleasant to shoot. So I was very curious how all three of these guns we're going to shoot. Now, one thing that is interesting about all three of these guns is they all have very high bore axes. So if you see where the web of my hand is roughly in line with my finger, you can see the barrel bore line is right there, significantly higher. Same exercise with the Walter, you can see the bore line right there. It's a little bit lower than the Beretta, but not a lot more, but it is a tilt lock action versus a falling locking block action. And similarly with the STI, you can see the bull barrel versus my finger height. The, the STI actually looks to be a little bit lower than the Beretta as well. Now, none of these guns would be considered a low bore axis gun like a Glock or something like that. So all of these guns did have a more muzzle climb, kind of a flippy tendency. One thing I noticed on all three guns is the timing of the gun and how I needed to shoot it regardless of the load that was in the gun didn't change based on the ammo. Now, my recoil control is good, not great. And all three guns, I was able to keep up with about 20 to 24 second splits at 15 yards, which is pretty good for a non-compensated gun. Now I'm about to wrap it up and get to the conclusion, but as I promised, as a thank you for liking and subscribing to this video, the plot twist, there is a new challenger that has entered the ring. It is the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS. Since all the other guns are wildly expensive, I wanted to put a more basic gun, kind of the yardstick to which all other do duty guns are measured, and that is the Glock 19 Gen 5. The Glock 19 is the lightest weight gun of the group. The trigger is the worst at six and a half pounds. It's all kinds of creepy and mushy. The cost ranges between about $620 to $750, depending on when you try and buy one. So the gun is the most inexpensive of the group. My reason for including the Glock was this, is like, do you legitimately get more for your money if you spend more on a pistol? Now, I had my baselines for all of the other guns kind of there. The Glock basically had the same performance results on the Chrono as did the Walter. On the plate rack, it left three plates up. Uh, the trigger is not very good on the Glock comparatively. It was about six and a half pounds on the example gun that you see here. And as a result, just the squishiness and unpredictability of the Glock trigger, it was difficult to get the accuracy at speed. Moving over to the B8 Bullseye, I shot an 84 x which wasn't particularly great. And then on recoil management, that's where the things really kind of went sideways. When I loaded the gun up with the target loads, recoil management was fine. The gun was absolutely pleasant to shoot, just like everyone says about all the Glocks. But when I loaded it up with NATO, the recoil impulse going from the target load to the duty load was markedly different. The timing of the gun changed. I needed more time to let my sights settle down. I actually dropped a few shots on the steel and didn't even connect despite slowing down my trigger cadence. So the gun was markedly more violent recoiling than it was with the target loads. It definitely jumps around more 23, 23, 26. 23. I was trying to control it better, but it definitely jumps around more. Now, my history with Glocks is rather long. If you're familiar with the channel, I used to compete with Glocks. That said, I had to work a lot harder for less of a good result with the Glock pistol. Which leads me to the topic for another video, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments on this, is is the bore axis thing total bunk? Yes, bore axis will make the guns more flippy, but who cares if they return to zero? The Six Hour P226 is one of the easiest guns to shoot just because the timing with nine millimeter on most pistols is very, very natural. It's just very easy to shoot predictably and accurately. And I found that to be the case on the hammer fired guns in the test. So now it comes down to which gun would I pick if you made me only pick one of these three excellent guns. Now, unquestionably, I shot the Walter the best, albeit not with the highest degree of confidence because I wasn't familiar with the new trigger that I had just installed. My only hesitation on picking the Walter is that the gun is very heavy. It's 37 ounces. However, the price tag is the lightest that we got at about $1,300. So if it's my money that's making the decision, I definitely, definitely, definitely would pick the Walter. However, if I'm operating under the it's not my money and I don't really care how much everything costs, I simply want what I think is the best for me, 
then it probably ends up being the STI-C2. And that's for two reasons, and this is unique to me, I'm not saying these are objectively true. The gun is significantly lighter than the Walter at 27 ounces, so it's gonna be less of a pain to lug around all day. But most importantly for me is that the way the optic presents, the way the gun grip feels, this is exactly like my competition gun. So I can see the benefit of choosing the C2 if it's somebody else's gun. But since it's my money that gets to make the decision, um, I like the STI, but it is $1,000 more than the Walter, which I actually shoot better. To my Beretta bros who feel betrayed that I have not mentioned the beloved LTT, I still love this gun. It's one of my absolute favorites. I just have gotten so used to shooting 2011s that if I were to carry a Beretta, I would need the Vertec frame. The Vertec frame for me presents much more consistently because it presents like a 1911 style pistol. In fact, I have the M9A4 in for review right now, and I love shooting that thing because it has the Vertec frame, not the traditional 92 frame. To me, the recoil impulse on the Beretta is the most pleasurable of all the guns that I shot. However, it's more than just that. I mean, I had more confidence on both the other guns and drawing to a 25 yard difficult shot. If you made me pick one gun purely for looks or potentially as a range toy, I hate to use that word, but like a gun that just, just shoot for pleasure on the range, it very well might be the Beretta. Sound off in the comments, let me know which of the three you would choose and maybe watch this video on the Walter Q4 SF. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.